We're here at the Linara Connect here in San Francisco, and who are you? Hi, uh, I'm uh, Peng Cheng uh, from Thundersoft. I'm the CTO of uh, Thundersoft. So Thundersoft right here, you are a um, uh, solutions company, software company. What is Thundersoft? Okay, so uh, uh, we founded about nine years ago by a bunch of Guinness hackers. So uh, our business uh, started from day one. We're focusing in this uh, so-called smart device, our uh, printing system, and uh, also platform. Uh, like Linux or Android based or Arthos based. So you work on all these uh, uh, Linux yeah. platforms? Yes. So founded by a bunch of Linux hackers yeah. uh, in China? Yes. Uh, yeah, we also have presence in Korea, Japan, US here, and also Europe uh, as well. And uh, are you one of the founders? Uh, yeah, the yeah, I'm uh, yeah. in charge of the technical uh, division of uh, Sonnetsoft. So, yes. uh, uh, also strategy, what yes. to do in the future? Yeah, especially what are we going to do in the future. And uh, yeah. so there's all these uh, uh, development boards right here you talk about, right? Yeah. For example, uh, and uh, so so how many people in, uh, mm -hmm. in Thundersoft? Uh, currently we have 3,000 uh, people, uh, mostly engineers like I myself. And uh, we went public two years ago in Shenzhen stock market. So we're a public company right now. So uh, yeah. mostly engineers, that's gotta be a very interesting office, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and how do you organize, how do you figure out who does what? Uh, how, there's so many oh, yeah. projects, right? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, uh, we use different approach, you know, it's kind of a mixed uh, the procedural model and also uh, all this uh, bizarre, bizarre model. And uh, 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 internally, we have uh, uh, four business units. We have uh, this uh, uh, mobile business unit, like this one. Uh, we have a business, uh, mobile business unit. Uh, we have the IoT business unit. We have automotive uh, BU, and as well as the AI BU. So uh, four groups working on different uh, projects, but uh, they have uh, something in common. Is what we call this a uh, smart uh, system, smart device. They share the similar operating system, the similar media, uh, uh, multimedia code or middleware. Yeah. And uh, right here, some of the uh, platforms you are on, yes. you are on Qualcomm, Texas Instruments. Yes. A lot of ARM solutions. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, Mostly yeah. is ARM, right? Or is also and Intel. also Intel, I have to yeah. say. But uh, of course, but because we started with mobile, so that's why we're doing a lot of uh, ARM-based devices. In terms of quantity of platforms, is ARM because there's so many. It is. And so, uh, um, what do you think about the ARM ecosystem and Linaro? How long have you been part of the, the Linaro? Yeah, uh, we, we have been uh, in Linaro uh, uh, long ago. Actually, from the very beginning. Actually, uh, when Linaro founded. Uh, uh, we assigned some engineers. We are one of the uh, early uh, uh, participants from an RO. And uh, now we are uh, uh, part of the steering uh, committee of uh, 96 boards. And uh, mostly uh, IoT based activities uh, in an RO right now. So uh, there's some, uh, right here you're showing some uh, development boards. Yes. What are these, for example, what is this one? Okay, so this is the board we, uh, we did uh, for drone. So uh, uh, if you go to the Apple store, you can buy uh, uh, some products. Uh, for example, a product called uh, Zero, uh, Zero, Zero uh, Drone. Uh, you can buy this in Apple Store. And this and, is what uh, Qualcomm is on here? This is uh, a Qualcomm Snapdragon 800 board. Uh, this board only weighs about uh, 16 grams, very lightweight. Uh, you can see it's very small, uh, just the size of my finger. And uh, so with everything uh, included, including the camera, Wi-Fi, everything. So you can basically uh, put some uh, uh, a perpetual and uh, you are ready to fly. So very lightweight and powerful. Do you, does your company do PCB designs too? Or do you uh, work with companies to do yeah, that? Yeah, although uh, we call us uh, uh, Thundersoft. So <laughs> software is our major uh, business. But we do provide this kind of uh, module or system or module uh, for our customers, ODM, ODM brand owner, so that they can build the devices, mostly IoT devices, much easier and quicker uh, into market. Like drone, this one is for drone, and uh, this one is for VR, AR type of uh, uh, application. That's a 20, 820 based. 
and uh, so that goes in VR. That's VR and AR. So, so VR. Head, head, on, in head mounted this. Uh, yes, solution. yes, yes. I try my D. I try my D type of device. So that's another example. Yeah. So, so customer can hook up their lens, camera, and very easily to put into market their VR devices. Uh, this one, another example is the camera. Is a Qualcomm A053 based IP camera or smart camera. Uh, you can also run a lot of uh, uh, fun stuff like a deep learning stuff on top of this uh, little uh, board. And that's the, which yeah. chipset is that? Uh, this A053 uh, 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 chipset of uh, Qualcomm. All right. Yeah. Um, and uh, so you uh, f you had, for example, a session about um, yeah. uh, automotive solution. Yes. What do you do with automotive? Yeah. So uh, we started this automotive uh, business uh, three years ago, and uh, that's why we have this uh, automotive BU. And uh, I will have uh, an yeah. uh, overview. OK, so that's a good slide. And uh, this is what we do. So uh, generally speaking, we provide this, uh, uh, we call this a smart cockpit total solution to either tier one or car makers. So that smart cockpit will contain several things like uh, some infra ADAS. So uh, yeah. we did that for Baidu. Later, I can introduce more about uh, the, the works we did for Baidu self-driving car. Uh, that also including the interface 3D engine. We provide this 3D engine and 3D tools so that you can have a very fancy look uh, interface in your car for both cluster and the infotainment. So we provide infotainment as well. and. Uh, uh, together with the uh, digital cluster, you are more consistent and uh, 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 professional uh, look for the. Isn't it related with the 3D UI engine? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can see this one is a digital uh, cluster, digital yeah. cluster meter, and uh, uh, traditionally you only use uh, a mechanical. It's more like yeah. a feature phone or feature car. Now, if you go to uh, the smart car. Uh, you can do a lot of uh, cool things and uh, interesting and uh, infer uh, uh, informative things, uh, smart things on your uh, uh, cluster. So this is an example. We have the 3D meter and yeah. also I can project uh, some uh, multimedia or even maps on top of your cluster display. So, uh, you work with the self-driving cars and Baidu solution? Yeah, 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 yeah. What is this uh, self-driving car solution? Uh, I will show some video. Maybe that's a good example. So this is, uh, you know, Baidu uh, announced a self-driving car in their Baidu uh, World Conference. So this is a uh, uh, AR HUD or AR HMI uh, project we did together with Baidu and uh, Bosch. So uh, it's in Chinese, but you can see what is the what it's doing. Is it just cameras or is it using here. special sensors? Yeah, you can see here, we have this AR projector and uh, information like this online and all this uh, signal for the traffic. And uh, that's what we did. Uh, we provide this uh, solution uh, like this uh, tablet still. Later we will have HOD and project all this uh, uh, visual assistance to the driver. It's just them. based on the camera? Only. Based on the camera only. No need extra sensors? No LiDAR? Need. No, no LiDAR? Need at all. No LiDAR. Is, uh, you can see this is just a tablet. And it's driving a, by itself? Yeah. With the with off shelf. With one camera. With but, the off shelf camera. Yeah. But need a good camera? Of course. Yeah. yeah. Good camera? Yeah. And when, what's the chipset? Or is it a secret? Where, how do you... Uh, know? Oh, the chipset is up to the... Uh, uh, <laughs> Like Baidu to select. Can you run it on, on the? Can you run it on the Qualcomm like this, or you need more? Yeah, certainly. Uh, uh, currently, actually, is running on some uh, Nvidia uh, uh, platform, and uh, depending on the, uh, the customer choice, uh, you can run this, uh, of course, on Qualcomm or other uh, chipsets. Yeah. So, so how soon is, for example, China gonna gonna uh, mm -hmm. regulate that every car need to be self-driving car? Uh. You, you know, Maybe I'm, they can I'm do it very quickly, right? I'm from the technical side, so <laughs> it's not political yeah, side. I, I can see China is moving much faster. I, I put it this way. So you know, people have some concern about the regulation, about safety, but the people also uh, 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 want to get all these uh, benefits and also those innovations. So China, uh, in some sense, a little bit more aggressive 
not from the uh, business sector like Baidu. You can see what Baidu are doing. Actually, they're driving this in Beijing, uh, right there. And uh, you can see... Uh, and it's fine. Not no. totally fine, but yeah. uh, technically it's fine. Uh, our government also uh, behind that, I have to say. So they are putting more uh, resource, capital, and, uh, and of course they build all this uh, driving environment. You have to tie this, right? So the government also invests a lot so that those uh, business sector can test their self-driving car. I think, of course, yeah. it would be great to have zero accidents, yeah. but I think the most important is to have less accidents than sure. people driving. Sure. And it's, it's, it feels like here in the USA, for example, it's like, no, we don't agree with less. We just want zero. So that means it will never happen. It will never happen. So it just needs to be better, and that's yeah. the common sense. And maybe yeah. already your solution is already better than a human, maybe. Yeah, yeah. The Maybe. government has to play a very crucial role here. You know, government actually, uh, our government is fully behind this, although I'm not from the government sector, yeah. but uh, you can see the result. And also, you know, China, we also have a want to solve the problem of the environment. You know, we have some pollution there. So that would be a key to resolve that. So our government is fully behind this. So there's a lot of future in the automotive. Uh, yeah. What other uh, sectors are you talking about? If we can go back in your slides a little sure. bit, maybe? Uh, and uh, so, just uh, so this is from technical side. Actually, in order to reach this uh, uh, smart car, uh, this is the architecture we uh, we build. So you need to have a good hardware uh, for the smart car. We view smart car is more like a smartphone. It's just a smartphone with uh, wheels, four wheels, with uh, actual safety. Uh, and extra uh, power, and uh, you need uh, hard, uh, hardware. You can see uh, most of cars, uh, those hardware come from the mobile business, mobile sector, like a Qualcomm, like a, a, a Renesas, like a TI. And then you need a good hypervisor to provide all this uh, uh, security and the regulation uh, certification. And also safety. reliability. Of course, very important. That's that's, a, that's enabled with hypervisor. Or yes. Yeah? Yes. The hypervisor we provide that as well together with our partner, and uh, like uh, for example like QNX or Green Hill, and on top of that we run Linux or Android or any uh, autos on top of that. So that and also of course all those middleware, especially like uh, uh, the multimedia, uh, like the Kanzi is the one we uh, uh, actually that's a company we acquired early this year is uh, called Redware uh, in Finland. So they provide a pretty cool UI engine and the tools uh, for those uh, smart car, and uh, also the AI engine. So build on top of those middleware, you can have all this uh, infotainment or cluster or HUD things. So uh, yeah. do you think you can, uh, yes. you can have all the Lenaro talking about maybe yes. helping in this, uh, working in this automotive space, right? Sure. Is it important to have an open source ecosystem yeah doing a lot of things in here, right? Yeah, it's uh, very important. Actually, yesterday we have the talk and also uh, uh, the presentation and also the discussion, uh, especially in the areas like uh, the hypervisor or autos or even the Linux, like uh, Monaro is also uh, 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 organizing this uh, special interest group for automotive. Uh, uh, we're part of that and we hope we get more deeply involved as well. And uh, for open source, to jump into this uh, new uh, uh, sector, especially self-driving car or this smart car, is very crucial uh, to have uh, all these innovations and all these uh, problem to be solved in a, a community type of session, fashion. What do you think about yeah. Android car, Android auto? Android is this auto. something you can work with? Or yeah, is this something certainly. Google wants to do everything for everybody? Uh, how do, you how do you optimize Android and customize? And okay, uh, actually, for example, like Android uh, old, old car, and uh, we are fully uh, involved and uh, uh, for some uh, customers, tier one customers. And uh, I think it's similar to uh, uh, the smartphone. So uh, uh, for smartphone, of course, it's uh, uh, dominated by iOS or Android, uh, but uh, uh, people are also doing, actually we're also doing Linux-based uh, smartphone, even for that, a particular domain requires a much stronger uh, ecosystem. Uh, for smart car, actually we do both Android and Linux. Uh, for Android, we enhance this uh, Android old car as, 
as what we did for the smartphone uh, years ago. Uh, we, we, we think the history has been repeated. Actually, uh, like uh, six, uh, seven years ago, you have this uh, Android uh, uh, for oil or all this uh, uh, early. What did you do with this? Uh, for smartphone or? Like for the smartphone. Oh, for smartphone a lot. Okay, if you remember, actually, uh, not long ago, like five, four, uh, maybe six years ago, and uh, even you do not have a full Chinese support there. Arabic is not support there. And the carrier certification is not there. And the multi window is not there. And the fastboot is not there. A lot of things not there yet. But, but the market cannot wait. And so we did a lot of in, in enhancement works. And uh, for this uh, kernel side, middleware for Android. Now Android is getting more and more mature than before. Uh, but for car, it's the same story. It's just the early stage. You need a lot of security patches, you need the UI like what did, you need the certification, and also you need this much more mature multimedia, quite different from what you got for your smartphone. So a lot of things need to be done, and different customization requirement cannot be only solely provided by Google. So we did a similar thing years ago for smartphone. We're doing this right now for Automotive. And you were talking. You mentioned uh, multi-window. One thing I'm very excited. Yeah. I'm, I mean, I want to see more of yeah. is Android for productivity. Yes. Uh, I'm. 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 I'm hoping some someday that it would be useful in a laptop. You know, like. Yeah. Uh, uh, have you done stuff with that? Yeah. Actually, this is what I can show you. Something like uh, uh, connected. So this is something we did multi-window for a smartphone, and for car is even more important because in your car you have many display. You have cluster, you have IVI, you have backseat display. Do you want to those things running different operating system, different UI, and cannot talk to each other? That's not the way you want to go, not the not way the, our customer want to go. So that's why we provide this uh, so-called country connect, which means as a developer, you only develop once, uh, for example, a MIDI player. But you can easily configure this to control either through your backseat or through your cluster, control something that you are running on your IVI. And without having to program differently for those different uh, platforms. So that's what we provide this uh, so-called Kanzi Connect, so that for all this uh, display, you have one middleware, one application, and one consistent look and feel to uh, to the end user, to the customer. And actually Audi uh, did one demo with Google running this uh, Kanzi Connect technology, which we provide. Uh, we think that as a future, uh, you're going to see more and more this kind of a consistent uh, connected uh, display in your smart car. So over the last nine years, uh, yes. how many products were shipped with Thundersoft technology inside? Oh, is uh, it like millions and hundreds of millions, uh, or what is it? In terms of volume, you know, we provide those uh, uh, solution and uh, also uh, services. So uh, uh, the volume, uh, the total volume, is definitely uh, more than millions, uh, because we did a lot of smartphone uh, 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 reference design uh, support. Uh, I will use an example here to show some uh, uh, products we built. Yeah, it's a good example actually. Uh, uh, for example, this QRD is the first Qualcomm reference design we did uh, in 2010. Uh, that you can see that's uh, how Google Android looks at that uh, stage. What is QRD? It's Qualcomm reference design. So you work with that? Uh, yes. You worked on that? Yeah, yeah. So we you provide were, the software. You were one of the first to provide the Android. Yes. Android for yeah. smartphone yeah. kind of solutions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, before this one. Actually, we started from Intel, I have to say. We start from Intel MID, and that's one we build on the Linux. It's called the Midinix. Actually, uh, that's a root of Amigo, or now called Tizen. So uh, that's how they started, uh, started from the Nokia uh, uh, MIMO uh, project. It was also based a little bit on, on the TI OMAP, that kind of stuff, yeah, yeah, the yeah. Amigo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Before it started Texas with the TI for Nokia, and uh, uh, before that, we uh, ported that on Intel platform. But then, uh, when the smartphone kick off, like uh, seven, 2007, iPhone comes to life, and the Qualcomm switch gear from Linux to Android, we do the same thing. So we do more and more Android. 
now IoT and automotive. What is this camera turnkey? Uh, camera turnkey is like this. So, you know, uh, the camera, similar to the smartphone, uh, is getting much, much more smarter than before. Before that, it's only dumb camera. You put there and you streaming to the cloud. Hopefully, you do not watch this. <laughs> you only watch this when you see some instance. Something got stolen, you go watch that. But that's not the thing people are looking for. At this stage, people are looking more, more intelligence like uh, the AI things. So, so you already do smart smart IP camera in yes. 2012? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so yeah, yeah. the uh, smart decisions of what to send to the cloud? Yeah, like this one. So okay. this one actually you can order from our website. It's uh, based on this, uh, uh, this module. Actually, that one running exactly on this module, is 053 based module. Uh, you can run the AI applications, you can streaming out all this 4G, uh, 4K uh, uh, content. And it's very powerful. And that's designed for the smart camera. But this is recent, no? Uh, this is a recent. Uh, recent version. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Recent device. Yes. And you, you also in the, in the robots and smartwatch and... Yeah, and uh, VR, AR, and the drone, like this one, yes. So you're all over the place? Uh, everywhere. Yeah, because operating system is everywhere. So yeah. we'll go with that. And if we go back here, yes. um, uh, is there something about the IoT turnkey with Linaro? Yes, yes. Uh, so that's one of the big fields right now with the narrow is yes. the, the light group yes. doing something in there. Are you yeah, you're yeah. part of that? Uh, we're part of this uh, 96 board. We're steering uh, committee uh, member of uh, 96 board. So we're heavily uh, involved with their activities. Yeah, yeah. Uh, All right. Yeah. And in the future, uh, there's so many more opportunities in this in this world for using technology in a very smart way to do more. Then suddenly, maybe, what is the next iPhone? What is going to be the next killer app? You, you might be part of this. Yeah. You're probably already working on it. So next one will be something like this. Of course, everyone is talking about uh, uh, this, uh, not that guy. <laughs> yeah. uh, this guy, yeah. AI. So you can see uh, everyone, every talk, talk about AI. But uh, we're the one that actually really doing it. Uh, this is a demo we did early this year for Qualcomm. It's uh, uh, running on their 835 platform with uh, our algorithm and using their Snipey uh, neural processing engine to show the good performance. So does the 835 have on the SOC an AI silicon or is just yeah. using... It's running on their high silicon, uh, sorry, uh, sorry, uh, hexagon, hexagon. Uh, DSP and also their uh, uh, GPU and CPU. All right, but now the trend is that more and more SOCs will maybe come out with the AI on the silicon. That will bring much more work for you. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's what we like. Uh, for example, for high silicon, if you watch the news, actually last week they have an announcement, and also previously, uh, uh, Huawei Mobile also has an announcement in German for IFA meeting. So uh, if you watch the news, you can see we also have the joint announcement and the joint uh, demo with a high silicon to show this uh, foot detection and also uh, uh, the face detection uh, using their high silicon uh, AI core. So I would like to see a, a detection of everything inside, indoors, uh, yeah. detecting everything. That, that's going to be very exciting. Yeah. That's yeah, going to change the world, right? Yeah, it's getting there. And uh, especially, it's very important to detect all these things uh, on the edge, on this uh, module, not uh, send everything to the cloud. It takes too much time, uh, sacrifice too much sec privacy or security issue. So uh, that's getting there. And uh, we provide those uh, uh, AI algorithm, and most importantly, this AI enabling layer. So we bury the gap between the silicon people and uh, the algorithm people. Uh, those people sometimes hard to talk to each other. They speak a different language. So we are sitting in the middle as an operating system guy. We know both, and we bury the gap between those two type of... Uh, are you kind of company. making the operating system for AI? Yeah, it's kind of uh, AI OS, I put it this way, more like a marketing term. But yeah. also technically, we think it's right because you need this new AI OS to schedule, schedule the resource. 
uh, like a DSP, uh, GPU, CPU, or even Air Core more intelligent way, more efficient way. So you need a scheduler, and you also need a monitor to monitor the performance and the thermal, and you also need even the application store. Right? There's no way to provide you to provide the algorithm store like what Apple did for their uh, application. So that's actually operating system. That's what we are doing right now. And everything you've been doing for the last nine years, everything is open source? No. No? <laughs> no. We're, uh, you know, we started from the uh, uh, open source uh, community. We're a bunch of hackers. We have this uh, passion for open source, for freedom. But frankly speaking, after this uh, uh, nine years of this startup, we're still a startup, and uh, uh, most of people go to their 40s. Uh, we reach this stage of uh, combine this idealism with all this, uh, uh, I don't know how to call this, capitalism, realism. I think that there's some sweet spot we can do the job. Uh, if you go too further left or further right, no, not good. Uh, we have to ha find some, the, uh, something in the middle. In Chinese, we have something called the Zhong Yong. I talk about philosophy, but Zhong uh, Yong. So Zhong Yong means you half mean Confuci open source. Confucius. You know, you know Confucius or Confucius. Yeah, yeah. The philosophy most of yeah. Chinese people uh, agree on, <laughs> including I myself. So that means you have to uh, find the internal peace. Uh, you cannot go uh, extreme to either side. I know people are interested about open source, so open everything. It's not good to open everything, I have to say, although I'm in the open source community. Uh, some, but it's also not good to uh, close everything, like, uh, you know, Apple Way or whatever. So there's something in the middle. So something they open, like for example, for automotive, we need the open source hypervisor and uh, autos for those low layer, and so that uh, people do not duplicate the effort. They, they, there's absolutely no, uh, uh, no reason to spend so much money, so much effort to some thin layer requires so much security. We just need one or two very good uh, operating system like at Linux in, uh, in automotive. But we also need uh, some uh, algorithm and applications, middleware, and uh, so that we grow the, uh, the ecosystem. Those things does not have to be open, uh, open source. It's perfectly fine for people to close their algorithm, fire the IP, the patent to get money. That's how American got uh, bigger and how we think uh, the product uh, like this can get more attention and more market as well. Yeah, yeah, okay, so that's 